Welcome to Special Collections and Archives at the University of Waterloo. We're so happy you could join us today. This short video will cover what an archive is, provide information about our department, and show you how to locate materials in our holdings. Let's get started. What is an archive? You've probably heard the term archive before. An archive can refer to many things. It could be the physical space that records are kept in, such as special collections and archives. It could be the historical records pertaining to a person, organization, or business, such as the archives of Oktoberfest. And it can also be the act of preserving these records, such as archiving an email. In Canada, we work under the French system, including the concepts of fonds d'archive and respect des fonds. A fonds, F-O-N-D-S, is the whole of the archives of an organization or individual. This would mean everything that an organization or individual has created that pertains to their life or work. Outside of Canada, this is sometimes referred to as a records group or a collection. Within Canada, we often use the term collection to mean materials that have been brought together synthetically, such as a collection of seashells. How archivists work with materials and maintain original order is governed under respect des fonds. When materials are donated to the archive, Archivists make an effort to ensure that they are cataloged in the same order as they were kept and created by the donor. This is not always possible, especially with personal papers, as they often come to us in an unorganized state, such as in a suitcase. Where is Special Collections and Archives? Special Collections and Archives houses the university's collection of rare books, literary and historical archives, and the official history of the University of Waterloo. We are located on the first floor or basement of the Dana Porter Library. We are open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to noon, and then again from 1 to 4. The Doris Lewis Reading Room inside Special Collections and Archives is named for Doris Lewis, the first university librarian of the University of Waterloo. She retired in 1976, the same year that our department opened. What do we have? In Special Collections and Archives, we house approximately 4,000 linear feet of archival records, 17,000 rare periodicals, 60,000 rare books, and another 3,000 linear feet of university records off-site. The topics of these materials relate to anything that supports the research and teaching functions of the University of Waterloo. This has been historically women's studies, gender, sexuality, and social justice, local history, the environment, and spiritualism. When we talk about archival materials, what are we talking about? Depending on an archive's mandate or collection policy, they may collect one or a variety of different types of materials. Generally, when we think of primary sources, we think about documentary evidence, which may be official administrative records, such as minutes, bylaws, etc., or personal papers, such as deeds, diaries, or correspondence. There may also be ephemera, which falls somewhere between a document and a visual item. Ephemera are materials that were never intended to be kept long term, such as invitations, cards, catalogs, posters, and often printed material that are kept as souvenirs, such as napkins or cigarette cards. We have audiovisual materials, including sound and image recordings, photographs, cartographic records, maps and plans, architectural items, artifacts, microform, and artworks. We also have secondary sources, including books, periodicals, and newsprint. If the book, periodical, or newsprint that you are researching is contemporaneous to the topic that you are learning about, these can be considered primary sources as well. Shh. Archival rules. Although these rules are specific to the University of Waterloo, you will find that many archives have similar rules in place. These are in place to help ensure the longevity of the materials that we're working with. It's always good practice to contact an archive before you visit. Some archives may have certain days or times that they retrieve materials from closed storage and you will have to book this in advance. Although we appreciate a contact in advance at archives at uwaterloo.ca, we are also open to walk-ins. You will need to use pencil and paper or an electronic device such as a laptop to record notes. Please ask us about reproductions. We may be able to help you by creating high quality scans or we may need to ask the original donor for copyright permission to provide reproductions. Please speak with the staff. We are all here to help. We do not allow pens, markers, or other forms of permanent ink in the archives. We also do not allow eating or drinking in the reading room. Bags, backpacks, etc., 
must be kept in the lockers that we have in the front entrance to Special Collections and Archives. Now, you're probably wondering, where can I find this material? There are three avenues of access to locate materials held in Special Collections and Archives. One is through the library's catalog. The second is through our online database. And the third is through our digital library. I'm going to go through these now. This is the University of Waterloo Library catalog. On the main part of the screen, there's a search box. You can search in here for a keyword, a title, an author, or a subject heading. Let's say, for instance, we're interested in women's health. Let's search for that now. The default is a result of all the items held in the Waterloo Libraries, as well as our Omni Library Consortium partners. If you're interested in just materials held in special collections and archives, on the left-hand side of the screen, you can facet under Waterloo Library, Show More, Dana Porter Library, Special Collections and Archives. You can see by this, that there are 152 items in special collections and archives that pertain to women's health. These include books, periodicals, and archival collections. You will see here that the first item is a archival collection the Women's Health and Abortion Project collection. This item is a book, a Vancouver Women's Health booklet. If you locate a book that you are interested in seeing in person, please provide us with the call number. Special Collections and Archives does not use the Library of Congress subject heading call numbers that you would find in the circulating collection. Instead, our call numbers range from A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H with a number after them. In this case, this item's call number is G16839. If you're interested in learning more about an archival collection, such as the Women's Health and Abortion Project collection, call number is GA370. If we'd like to learn more, we can use the Archives Database. This is the Archives Database, archives.uwaterloo.ca. You'll remember in the previous screen that we looked at the Women's Health and Abortion Project. Let's search for it now. Here we are, Women's Health and Abortion Project Collection. Let's click on it to learn more. This screen brings you <coughs> information about the Women's Health and Abortion Project in greater detail. We can see the date that it was created, 1972, who it was created by, the Women's Health and Abortion Project, how much materials there are, in this case, two centimeters of textual records, and more information about it. In the scope and content note, we can see that the collection consists of an envelope of materials from the Women's Health and Abortion Project of New York that was sent to Pat Larson of Boston. Included in the envelope are Health Pack Bulletin from March 1970, Abortions in New York City, 1970 to 1971, Women and Contraceptives, Are You on the Pill, and more. If you are unsure about what archive you might like to research in, but you have a topic in mind, you can also browse based on our thematic areas, which can be found here on the left-hand side or through the Browse menu. Thematic areas include architecture, book arts, the creative arts process, dance, environment, gender and sexuality, Indigenous peoples, local history, mathematics, Southie and the Romantics, spiritualism and theosophy, the University of Waterloo, urban planning, women's studies, and the world wars in between. Let's say I'm interested in women's studies. If we click on the thematic area, we can see there are 125 archival description results for women's studies. This means that there are 125 unique collections that pertain to women's studies. Let's learn more about one of them. The Alice Riggs Hunt Fall. You see that word fall again that we learned at the beginning. Here we can see at the top level, the accession level, that the call number is WA15, and we can see that the collection spans the dates 1911 to 1973. It was created by Alice Riggs Hunt. It contains 54 centimeters of textual records and other materials. The materials are in English and French, and we can learn more about the collection. Materials relating to the life, career, activities, and interest of Alice Riggs Hunt includes correspondence, manuscripts, printed material clippings, diaries, and memorabilia. We can also learn more about Alice Riggs Hunt herself through a biographical history. If we would like to see specific items in the collection, under our hierarchy, we can see more. We can see that items in the collection are sorted into series. 
Series are groups of similar items. This may be similar in terms of format, such as photographs or diaries, or it may be similar in terms of topic, such as correspondence or published writings. If we click, for instance, on correspondence, we can see that there are items of correspondence listed between Alice Riggs Hunt and others. Let's look at file four. File four, we can see, was created between 1921 and 1922. It consists of three pieces of correspondence between Alice Riggs Hunt and Jane Addams. It's also possible to do a keyword search in the archives database. Let's say we're interested in suffrage. What comes up? If we search for suffrage, we can see there are 196 results. This will include materials that are both font or collections, as well as discrete items that are located within larger font or collections. We can see here that material from the Alice Riggs Hunt phone that we just looked at returns, as well as information such as the Canadian Suffrage Association letters patents, the Elizabeth Long phone, and the Elizabeth Smith short phone. If you are interested in materials that have already been digitized or were born digital, the best place to look is the University of Waterloo's digital library. At digital, library.uwaterloo.ca. There are multiple modes of entry into this SIS database. You can browse by clicking on Special Collections and Archives Digital Library Collections or University of Waterloo Archives Digital Library Collections. The University of Waterloo Archives Collections specifically relates to the history of the University of Waterloo. Let's look at the Special Collections Collections. Here you can see a list of the different collections and phones that we have digitized materials and made them available. For instance, let's take a look at the Clement Bowlby family phone. Here we can see a number of portraits of members of the Clement Bowlby family. Let's look at George Herbert Bowlby and his dog. This is a photograph of George Herbert Bowlby and his dog. We can find more information about the photograph, including the time that it was taken, in this case, 1868, the size of the photograph, 11 by seven centimeters, as well as the call number if you wanted to see this item in person, GA82-21-74 underscore 001. It is also possible to do a keyword search in the digital library. Let's look again for suffrage. When we look for suffrage in the digital library, we find materials that have been digitized and made available. You can see here there are photographs of Joanne Thompson, who seemed to be involved in women's suffrage, the National American Women's Suffrage Association handbill, and scrapbooks that have materials relating to suffrage in them. If you're interested in materials relating to the history of Waterloo, we can browse through the University of Waterloo Digital Library collection. Here we can see different publications that have been produced by the university over the years. Let's have a look at the Arts Lion. The Arts Lion was published between 1981 and 1985 by the Art Student Union. If you click on a specific issue that you're interested in, let's try November 6, 1984. The issue has been digitized and you can scroll through it. The issues are also full text OCR'd and are keyword searchable. For instance, if you wanted to find Elvin Jones, you can search inside for Elvin. Elvin is located here on this page, and there is also a hit here for the Elvin Jones Quintet. That concludes this short video on Special Collections and Archives at the University of Waterloo. If you have any further questions, including research needs, you can contact us at archives at uwaterloo.ca or by telephone 519 888-4567, extension 42619. Thank you.